morning and welcome back dear students before we begin today let us revise what we have learned what we came across during yesterday's class in the last class we saw prospero whole heartedly accepting his desire of the marriage between ferdinand and mirinda he calls out his honest spirit ariel and asks ariel to arrange a mask for the entertainment of the new couple by the magic power of ariel with the support of his assistant spirits they are trying to perform a kind of mask in front of mirinda and ferdinand as the mask begins ariel ask iris to appear and iris the goddesses of rainbow and the messenger of juno comes over the stage and she invites another goddess named ciaris she praises ciaris by stating or addressing her as the bondiest lady she addresses ciaris and says you are the reason for the green meadows you are the reason for all sorts of the agricultural produce and you are the reason for the variety of fruit that you grow on this land and as ciaris reaches she to praises iris by stating that you are the one who never disobey your mistress juno after reaching ciaris asks iris the question why have you asked me to come over here on this green grassy land in response to that iris says that's what we are going to see from today's class iris says a contract of true love to celebrate i have invited you here you have been invited to celebrate a solemn pledge of true love and some donation freely to your state on the blessed lovers and you are asked to bestow some gift on this happy couple i resist you are invited here in order to celebrate a solemn pledge of true love as well as to bestow some gift on the happy lovers in response to it siari says tell me heavenly bow if venus or her son asks thou dost know do now attend the queen since they did plot the means that a dusky dis my daughter got her and her blind boy scandled company i have for son siaris as iris tell me heavenly bow tell me iris juno's messenger the goddesses tell me the heavenly rainbow if venus or her son ask thou dost know do now attend the queen if you know whether venus as well as her son who is the son of venus venus son is cupid so she once again asks if you know whether venus venus is goddess of love and her son is cupid and we know the speciality of cupid 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 is always busy to make people fall in love with we know he is a blind god and he sends his arrows to different directions and the hearts of the people whom this arrows hit they fall in love with each other so one second let's see who venus as well as who cupid is venus is the goddess of love as well as beauty and cupid is her son who is the god of love so let's see once again what is ari's dialogue here is tell me heavenly bow tell me heavenly rainbow if venus and her son ask thou dost know do now attend the queen if you know whether venus as well as cupid her son is now serving juno we know that iris is juno's messenger so therefore iris has a complete knowledge about what juno does so therefore ciaris here asks once again let's see what ciaris asks if you know whether venus as well as cupid is now serving juno 
and the reason why she asked this question is she is quite unhappy with venus as well as cupid mainly she is quite unhappy with cupid the reason behind it is as i have already stated cupid is a person behind the people falling in love with each other so here what happens is cupid with his arrows made this this is goddess pluto he is described as the dark god he is called the dark god because he is called the dark god because he is the god of death once again let's see who this is this is pluto god of death pluto with the help of venus and cupid abducted prosperina prosperina is the daughter of ceres that is the reason ceres is unhappy with venus and venus as well as her son cupid cupid was the reason for this god pluto, pluto to fall in love with prosperina and they abducted her prosperina ceres daughter from the earth to his own kingdom Ceres had therefore been harboring a strong grievance against both the mother and the son and Ceres describes Cupid's company as a scandaled one it is a disgraceful one so therefore once again let's see Ceres asked Ares whether Venus as well as her son is serving Juno the reason she says from the time the role being played by venus as well as her son cupid to make pluto to fall in love with her her daughter prosperina and abducted her abducted her over here means taken away illegally very forcefully from earth and carried her to pluto's place and that is the reason she keeps a kind of a grievance towards venus as well as her son cupid iris responds to ceres as Ceres told that her son is uh, certainly scandal. He is a scandal. He is a disgraceful one. In response to that, Iris now says, Of her society, be not afraid. I met her deity, cutting the clouds towards uh, Paphos, and her son, doubt drawn with her. Here, thought they so have done some wanton charm upon this man and maid. Whose vows are that no bedride shall be played ere a hymen's torch be lighted. But when Mars' hot minion is returned again, her waspish headed son has broke his arrows, swears he will shoot no more, but play with the sparrows and be a boy right out. Let's see what Iris speaks here. Iris says, Of her society, be not afraid. Do not be afraid of her company. Do not be afraid of the company of Venus. That is what Iris says to, says to Ceres. As Ceres told that, I keep a kind of enmity. And her son, Cupid, is really a scandalful one, a disgraceful one. In response to that, once again, let's see what Iris says. Of her society, be not afraid. Do not be afraid of the company of Venus. I met her deity and he says that I met her godship. I met Venus. That is what Iris speaks over here. I met her as well as her son cutting the clouds towards Paphos. Paphos is the name of a place in the island of Cyprus, which is said to be the birthplace of Venus. Once again, let's see. Paphos is the birthplace of uh, Venus. That is what Iris speaks here. Iris says, I met her deity cutting the clouds. Cutting the clouds over here means sailing through the clouds. So Iris says that I have seen she is sailing through the clouds towards Paphos. From her birthplace Paphos and her son down drawn with her together with her son in a chariot drawn by the, by the cloud, uh, by the doves. She says that she has seen Venus as well as her son Cupid sailing, sailing through the clouds in a chariot which was drawn by the doves. Please let me repeat what Iris says. Iris says to Ceres in the beginning stating that do not be afraid of the company of Venus. And further she says she herself has seen Venus sailing through the clouds in the chariot drawn drawn by the doves together with her son cupid 
and further she says here thought they to have done some wanton charm upon this man and maid and she says that she felt that they have performed some magic charm on this man and maid she felt the moment she saw the chariot drawn by the doves she felt that venus as well as her son is moving to this place in order to perform some magic charm in front of this man and maid this man and maid over here ferdinand and mirenda she has seen her chariot moving so fastly and he felt that she is together with her son is coming to this place in order to perform some kind of magic trick magic trick in front of ferdinand and mirenda whose vows are that no bed rate shall be paid ere hyman's torch be lighted who have vowed she further says that these two couple that is ferdinand and miranda had make made a vow that is what who have vowed that no bed rate shall be paid which means they will have no physical union at all though they they are lovers ferdinand and miranda are the true lovers they will never have a physical union ere hyman's torch be lighted before the marriage is being solemnized until the time the marriage is being blessed come to the meaning of hyman's torch hyman we already know that he is a god of marriage hyman is a god of marriage and he was supposed to be carrying a lamp which was lighted when the marriage was solemnized he always used to carry a torch with him and the torch will be lit only when the marriage take place and that is the reason it is said over here they will have no physical union at all ere before hyman's torch be lighted before hyman lights lights the torch they will have no physical union at all both these lovers will have no union at all no relationship at all till the time their marriage is being solemnized further i researches but when but it is going to be vain it is going to be meaningless it is going to be useless why mars hot minion who is mars god hot minion first of all let's see who mars is mars is the god of war and her hot his hot minion his passionate darling the passionate darling of mars is venus herself the goddesses of love and beauty let's see once again but when mars hot minion is returned again it is not going to be successful at all as he told she told previously that they will have no physical union at all before hyman's torch is lit and immediately after that sia iris says that it is going to be vain the reason behind it mars hot minion the passionate darling of mars that is venus herself is returned again when this passionate goddess comes it is not going to be possible at all whatever promise that they have made that they will have no relationship at all before their wedding it is going to be vain because venus will be playing a role over here and therefore they will not be able to control themselves once again let's see that mars hot minion is returned again and her waspis headed son and her son has broke his arrows and here here Cupid is described as waspish because he always carries the arrow with him and he stings the people with his arrows as like a wasp hit the people and therefore he is addressed here as a waspish headed son ill tempered son her ill headed son ill tempered son has broke his arrows he has broken his arrows he always carries the arrows with him he is a blind god as i have already stated you and he sends the arrows to different direction and people fall in love with the one or the people who are hit by his arrows now what has he done he has broken his arrows and swears he will shoot no more and he has made the promise today cupid has made a promise today that with his arrows he will not be hitting hitting any individual at all but play with the sparrows and he will be playing with the sparrows and be a boy right out as like the other boys he will be a small boy once again he will not be doing the role of uh, hitting the people with the arrows but he will be playing with the uh, sparrows as like the other boys do cr's response to it is highest queen of state great juno comes i know her by her gait 
it was the moment Ciaris observed the approach of great Juno and therefore she says highest queen of state. Great Juno comes and I know her by her gait. In her walking style, the way she walks, I understand it is none but the Great Juno. It's the time that Great Juno approaches there. She sees Great Juno and he says, highest queen of the state, the queen of the gods, Great Juno comes here. I know her by the gate. I know her walking style. And then we see the entry of uh, Juno. And as Juno enters, she says, how does my bondier sister go with me to bless this twain that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue? As Juno approaches, she says, How does my bondiest sister, how are you, my generous sister Siaris? Siaris is always addressed as a bondiest because with a great generosity. She produces all sorts of crops, all sorts of vegetables, all sorts of uh, meadows over there in the barren land even and therefore she is always addressed as a generous sister. So therefore the moment Juno approaches, Juno wishes her by and asking her, how does my bondiest sister, how are you my generous sister? Go with me to bless this twine and you come with me. We will talk, go together in order to bless the couple. The couple over here means bless the twain over here means bless the couple. That is Ferdinand and Miranda. They may prosperous be so that they may have all the prosperities and honored in their issues. And they will have so many offsprings in their life. They will be successful having their children. That is what Juno says to CRS. Once again, let's see what Juno says over here. Juno addresses her as the bondier sister and says that let us go together in order to bless the new couple that they may be very successful in having their own issues, in having their own children. And immediately after that, she sings a song. Let's see the song. It is a kind of blessing that is meant for both the couple here. So let's see Juno's song. Juno sings. Honor, riches, marriage, blessing, long countenance and increasing, hourly joys be still upon you. Juno sings her blessing upon you. Let's see the song sung by Juno. Honor, riches, marriage, blessing. Let you have all the riches, all the honors and a happy married life. Let's see. She wishes both the couple. That is, Ferdinand and Miranda answers that you may have all the riches, you may have all the success, you may have all the honors in your married life. And long countenance, you may have a long life. Countenance over here means you may have a long life and increasing hourly joys be still upon you. And you may have the increasing happiness in your life. Let your happiness be increased each hour and increasing hourly joys be still upon you and hours of joy be ever upon you each hour let you have happiness and only happiness in your life that was the way juno started blessing ferdinand and miranda once again honor riches marriage blessing let you have all the riches all the honors as well as a happy married life and long countenance you may have a long life and increasing hourly joy be still upon you and let your happiness go on increasing each hour as each hour moves you may have more and more happiness in your life you know sings her blessing upon you this is what you know's blessing upon you this is the way i wanted to wish all the success in your newly life that is the way you know blessed both both Ferdinand as well as Miranda. As queen of the sky, that is Juno, bless the couple. Immediately after that, Ciaris sings a song. This song is also a form of blessing from the side of uh, Ciaris as well. Please remember, she is the bondiest lady, goddesses of uh, all sorts of prosperity, all kinds of uh, vegetables, agriculture, as well as the, as well as all the thriving grass on earth. So let's see what Ciaris speaks here. Years increase, voice and plenty, bands and garners never empty, vine and clustering branches growing, plants with a goodly burden blowing. Spring come to you at the furthest, in the very end of harvest, scarcity and want still shun you. 
CRE's blessing is so on you. So let's see what CRE speaks here. CRE says, Earth's increase, voice and plenty. May you be blessed with abundance of crops on this earth. Let you be blessed with all sorts of crop. You may have, as I have already told that Siaris is the God who is responsible for all sorts of agricultural products. And therefore she says, may you be blessed with abundance of crop. Let you have no scarcity of crops at all in your, in your newly life. So may you be blessed with abundant crops on earth. The meaning of the word poison is plenty. Let you be blessed with the plenty of crops. That is what CRE says in the beginning. And barns and garners never empty. Let your storehouse never be empty. Let your barns be always filled with the crops. You will never experience a kind of a scarcity of crops at all in your life. That is what the blessing given by CRE is the bondiest lady. Once again, let us come across. She sings, Earth's increase voice and plenty barns and guns never empty may you be blessed with abundance of crops on this earth and may your bands and storehouses never be empty let your storehouse always be filled with the crops and further she says vines and clustering bunches growing may your vines have clusters of grapes in it your vineyard your wine garden may be filled with uh, plenty of uh, grapes in it once again let's see what she says vines and clustering bunches growing may your vines have clusters of uh, grapes on it plants with goodly burden bowing and all the plants you have that must be bending because of the weight of the fruit the plants branches of the plants must be filled with a large number of fruits and the branches may be bending down all the plants that you have will always be bearing good amount of fruits on it plants with a goodly burden bowing spring come to you at the furthest in the very end of the harvest let the spring comes to you may spring comes to you at the latest once the harvesting gets over only after the completion of the harvest the spring may come into your life you will be able to harvest everything and you may be able to store everything into your barns and the spring comes only after that and the scarcity and want shall shun you May scarcity and want never come to you. You may have no scarcity of anything at all in your life and you may not be wanting to have anything in your life. Let there be no scarcity of uh, fruits as well as the crop in your life at all. CRE's blessing is so on you. This is what CRE's blessing upon you. Once again, let us see the way CRE's blesses. Ferdinand and Miranda, CRS in the beginning says that you may have abundance of crop, abundance of crop and your storehouses may always be filled with the full of crops in it. Let there be no scarcity of crops at all in your life and vines and clustering branches growing. May your vines have clusters of crops in it and plants with a goodly burden bowing and the branches of your plants would be bending down because of the weight of the fruits that they carry on them and the spring come to you at the furthest in the very end of harvest and may spring come to you at the latest by the very end of the harvest time you may have the spring season only when the harvest is complete scarcity and want shall shun you and you may not have a scarcity of anything in your life at all CRE's blessing is so on you this is what the blessings of CRE is upon you is after getting the blessings from Juno as well as CRE Ferdinand was hum completely wonderstruck. So let's see the dialogue of Ferdinand here. Ferdinand says, This is a most majestic vision and harmoniously charming. May I be bold to think these spirits. He says, This is a most majestic vision. What a splendid vision it is. And harmoniously charming. Harmoniously means consistently. It was a magical and charming one. May I be bold to think these spirits. May I be bold to ask you, my father-in-law, whether they are spirits. May I have the courage to ask you, my father-in-law, Prospero, to know whether they are 
spirits immediately after that prosperous spirits which by mine art i have from their confines called to enact my present fancies yes prospero agrees and he says that spirits certainly they are spirits they are no human being at all prospero agrees and he says that they are the spirits which by my art which by my magic art i have from their confines i have taken from their presence from their hiding places called to enact in order to accomplish my present fancies i have some fancies in my mind which i have to present in front of you in order to present my fancies in front of you i have called these all these spirits to this place so that my whatever is there in my mind that will be actualized in front of you for that purpose i have called them from their confines that is what prospero speaks here once again let us go through prospero's dialogue he says certainly they are spirits they are no human beings at all they are spirits which by my art and these spirits i have brought over here by my magic art i have from their confines called to enact i have called them over to oh, oh, i have called them from their hiding place to this place so that they may accomplish my present fancies they may enact my present fancies i have certain certain imagination and those imaginations are to be actualized and therefore i have called them to come from their hiding place from their confines and they are here that is what prospero's answer to ferdinand is ferdinand says let me live here forever so rare a wonderful father and wise makes this place paradise and ferdinand after seeing all this after seeing the great wisdom of her, his father in law he wishes to live over here in this island permanently and that is what he says permanent ferdinand here says let me live here ever let me live over here in this place permanently forever i wish to be here in this isle so rare a wonderful father and a wise makes this place a paradise he says that my father in law is a wonderful person and has wonderful powers and wisdom and that makes this place a paradise the wisdom as well as my wonderful father in law's ability makes this place a paradise and therefore i wish to be here in this paradise permanently as the dialogue between prospero and ferdinand was going on juno and ciaris were whispering each other they were planning something in their mind let's see juno and ciaris whisper and send iris on the employment they spoke something to each other they were whispering each other and they have sent iris so that iris may perform something in front of the new couple so prospero says prospero has seen both juno and the cr is whispering something so let's see what prospero speaks here sweet now silent so he says ferdinand my sweet son be silent now sweet now silent juno and the cr is whisper seriously because juno as well as cr is they are whispering something very very seriously and therefore let us not disturb them that is what prospero here says sweet now silence my sweet son in law ferdinand be silent because juno and the cr is whisper something very seriously and there is something else to do they are planning to do something more that is the reason they are whispering each other they are planning to do something more hush and be mute be silent let us not speak anything at all or else our spell is marred otherwise all my magic spell will be totally ruined let us be quiet let us not speak anything else as ferdinand has already asked for prospero whether these are the spirit or are they the real human beings in response to that he told that they are the spirit who are brought over here by the magic power of uh, prospero himself and as this conversation was going on there was a dialogue a whispering which was going on between juno and uh, ciaris and prospero watched them very keenly and prospero says his son in law to be quiet otherwise all their effort is going to be ruined or else our spell is uh, marred marred over here means it will be totally in operation and that is what ruined it is going to be ruined 
and Iris speaks something here. Let's see what Iris is planning to do. We have already seen Juno and Ciaris were speaking something. They were whispering something and they have sent Iris for the purpose of performing something in front of the couple. Iris comes over here and let us see what Iris says. You nymph called in Iris of the wandering brooks with your sledged crowns and ever harmless looks leave your crisp channels and on this green land answer your summons juno does command come temperate names and help to celebrate a contract of true love be not too late so here iris is inviting a group of spirits they are called the niades niades are the spirit they live over there in the brooks in the spring so they are being invited here as it is already told juno and siaris whispered something to each other and they have employed iris to perform something and iris has taken up that challenge and Iris has invited a group of spirit. Please come to know they are the nymphs called Niades. They are named as Niades. Niades, please remember, they are the spirits. They live over there in the, in the brooks and he is inviting all these spirits to come over there. Let's see once again what Iris says. You nymph called Niaris of the wandering brooks who live over there in the flowing brooks, in the stream. You are the spirit that live over there in the flowing brooks, in the flowing streams with your surged crowns. And you are the spirit who used to wear the crowns always. And what sort of crowns are they? They are the surged crowns. Surged crowns means surge is a kind of plant. They used to make a crown which is made of the sedges. It's a kind of small grass. With the help of this grass, they used to make the crown and these spirits used to wear the crown always. So that is what he speaks over here. With your surged crowns and ever harmless look, you are the spirit which always have a harmless look, innocent looks. Come answer to your someone respond to our call that is what iris here says iris invites a group of spirits they are called the niades as i have already told niades are the spirits that live over there in the brooks so he asked them to come over here. He says that you are the spirit who used to wear a kind of sludged crowns always. And you have got such an innocent look and come uh, to answer to my call. That is what Iris speaks here. Once again, let us go through the original text. Here Iris says, you names, you spirits called the Niades. You are the spirits that are named as Niades of the wandering brooks who live over there in the flowing streams with your surged crowns and the ever harmless look. Leave your crisp channel. Crisp channel over here means the channel when when the when the water moves in the brook it produces a kind of bubbles and that is what the meaning of a crisp channel the the, uh, the streams which always produces the bubbles out of it and on this green land answer you are someone come over here in order to respond to our call living out your streams rippling streams your rippling streams come over here and answer to our are summons. I am inviting you to perform something over here. So therefore, leave your hiding place. That is a stream which always produces a kind of ripples in it. Leave the streams over there, bearing your crown, which are made of the sedges and with the same innocent look that you have. Come over here in order to answer to our respond. That is what Iris speaks. Juno does command. Come temperate names and help to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. He further says, Juno asks you to be here. It is the command of the Juno as well. It is not my, my order alone. It is the command of Juno, the queen of gods. Once again, let's see that. Juno does command. Juno asks you to be here. Temperate names. You are the quiet names. They are the spirit which is always very, very quiet. That is the reason Iris address Niades as the temperate names. Temperate means quiet spirits. 
my quiet spirits juno does command come this is a command of juno as well my temperate spirits and help to celebrate a contract of true love and help to celebrate i am inviting you so that you may be a part of this celebration in the contract of true love in the marriage of true lovers contract over here means contract of marriage marriage of the true lovers and be not too late do not be late immediately come to this place so that with your help we all together will be celebrating this new contract this marriage contract between the new couple as iris has asked them not to be late the spirits immediately enter let's see entry of certain names a group of spirits called niadis they came together as iris told them do not be late immediately they reach over there as they were invited by iris and immediately after that iris says iris sees a group of people they are you sunburned sickle men sickle men over here means the reapers the people who carry the sickle with them so that they may go for a harvesting they are the people who are returning after the harvesting carrying the sickle in their hand you sunburned sickle men of august weary you are tired because of the heat of the august in the august month it is extremely heat over there in the western countries and they are returning back after the harvesting season so therefore he says you sunburned sickle men of august weary come hither from the furrow come to this place from the furrow furrow over here means the plowed land the land which is the field which is already plowed from the land from the field come to this place and be merry and be happy make holiday make holiday over here means be rejoice he says the sickle men the people who were harvesting over there in the field he asked all these people who were harvesting over there he invited them he tells them you leave the land over there and come to this place let us see once again barrows and be merry make holiday how rejoice in it you are raised straw hats put on where your hats they are always wearing they used to wear the hat and he says over here put on your hats which are made of the rice straw and these fresh nymphs encounter everyone in country footing and joining this fresh spirit fresh spirits over here means the young spirits young nymphs in the country dance you join them join together with them in the country dance as iris already invited a group of uh, group of nymphs called the niadis who were the spirits that used to live over there in the stream he asked them come with your hat wearing the hat which are made of the sedges and they came over there as iris told them not to be late they reached over there immediately as these spirits came immediately he sees a group of reapers there and he says that you also wear your hat which are made of the straws of rye and come over here and join these spirits in their country dance as these reapers are invited they also come to the state and their certain reapers properly habitated so they are also properly dressed and they join with the nymphs the nymphs over here means the niadis they join the niadis in a graceful dance we see now on the stage the spirits niadis as well as the sickle men all of them together perform their country dance and towards the end the dance is going on the music is being played and they go on with their dance almost by the end of this dance let's see what happened towards the end where of prospero starts suddenly prospero starts over here I mean he jumps very suddenly as everything was going so smoothly the dance was being performed by niadis as well as the sickle man and it was going on so smoothly and the couple ferdinand and miranda was highly enjoying the program which was going on that is the time immediately prospero jumps so that is the meaning of the word starts here prospero starts suddenly and speaks and he started speaking something which no one was able to understand what happened over there at the present moment after 
which to strange hollow and confused noise they heavily vanish he produces a kind of confused noise a harsh noise a hollow noise and which made they heavily vanish all the spirits sudden very sadly move away from there once again let's see that the country dance was going on very smoothly the yadis as well as the sickle men they were together dancing over there and miranda and ferdinand was highly enjoying the dance being performed by the spirits and almost the dance was about to get over suddenly a transition that has taken place in prospero he started jumping and he started shouting something very very loudly over there which made all the spirit to be scared and they started moving aside let us happen let us see what happened to prospero prospero here speaks but remember he speaks aside very clearly it is placed in bracket he speaks aside let us see what prospero speaks all alone I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life the minute of their plot is almost come to the spirit well then avoid no more so let's see what he speaks over here prospero all alone first he speaks i had forgot that foul conspiracy i have forgotten about that foul conspiracy of the beast caliban which is planned by my servant caliban that beastly natured caliban and his confederates confederates over here means his helpers the other conspirators together with caliban and the other conspirators what they have planned i have forgotten against my life they have planned some conspiracy against my life they have decided to kill me by the help of together with the help of caliban together with the help of stefano and trigulo they have decided to kill prospero and that is what immediately he remembers he recollects and he says that i had forgot that foul conspiracy on the beast caliban and his conspirators the conspiracy that is being planned by caliban together with stefano and trigulo against my life i had forgotten about it he says and the minute of their plot is almost come and the appointed time this is the time that they have planned to take my life away from me the time has already approached immediately he recollects this is the time they have planned to murder me and now he speaks loudly to the spirits well done you have done your job very well dear spirits he turned to the niadis the spirits that live over there in the brooks and he says that you have done your duty perfectly well well done avoid avoid means be gone your role is over now you can uh, leave the place be gone no more and let there be no more dance at all once again let's see as the dance was about to complete the dance being danced by niadis as well as the reapers it was about to complete that was the moment a great transition that has taken place in prospero he jumps from there and he shouts because he remembers it is the time that caliban together with the other conspirators stringulo and stefano had decided to kill him this is the minute this is the time that they have decided to take my life away and i have to challenge them that is what he immediately remembers and he he says the spirits well done your role you have played perfectly well avoid avoid means be gone it's enough for now and no more let there be no more dance performance at the present moment you may go without any delay that is what he says to the spirits dear students let's stop for the day please do go through the original text write the paraphrase in your copies and please don't forget to learn the new meanings that is given in the right hand side of the textbook and we will be continuing the rest in the next class thank you